How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel for another Star Wars gaming bi-weekly news update video. You guys know how this series works by now. Every two weeks or so, give or take, we round up the latest in Star Wars gaming news. From Battlefront to Squadrons to Fallen Order to Lego Star Wars to upcoming Star Wars games, you name it, we cover it. We've been doing this series for about three months now and it's by far and away the one that you guys appear to enjoy the most so we're cracking on with it again today and we do have a lot to get to. So in this video we've got a bit of everything going on. We've got some huge news on Star Wars Squadrons actually getting free DLC which has been confirmed which will include new Starfighters and a new map. We've also got some details on rising numbers of players for games like Jedi Fallen Order and Battlefront 2. We've got updates on the Fallen Order sequel from Respawn, as well as some big news regarding the chances of EA keeping the rights to make Star Wars games. So there is plenty to get to today. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications on for the latest on Star Wars games. And it's also worth mentioning that I did upload big videos for Jedi Fallen Order, Battlefront and Battlefront 2 for their anniversaries. So the links to all of those videos will be down below if you want to check them out after this video is done. I did put a lot of time into those videos and I've had a really alarming amount of you say that you didn't actually even know that they were posted. But that's pretty much all the housekeeping I wanted to do for this video. But for now, let's dive into the news. So guys, EA Play games have been added to Xbox Game Pass. Now this has seen a massive resurgence on console for Star Wars games. Jedi Fallen Order and Battlefront 2 have again grown in popularity. I think now with Battlefront 2 being added to the Games Pass Ultimate as well as Battlefront 2 being added to PlayStation Plus months ago, this has seen a bit of a resurgence for Battlefront 2 on console. The game was really starting to kind of fizzle out a little bit, but no more. Player numbers are once again rising for Battlefront 2 despite the fact that the game's live service was cancelled like 7 months ago. It's pretty insane to be honest. And I know it's not going to happen but considering the rise in player numbers I would still hope for the slim to none chance that live service got reinstated for Battlefront 2 once development slowed up for Battlefield 6. Maybe they could add like a paid skin system or something, I don't know, just so they don't lose money on the game. Because for a game that got abandoned like Battlefront 2 did, to see it still gaining players, it's like, why have that sitting on the sideline? I just don't get it. But to piggyback off what we just talked about, and this is more news orientated this time, something very interesting has surfaced lately. A video game analyst that used to work for Warner Brothers Games and Activision posted a new report showing that Jedi Fallen Order was number two in the top 10 best selling games in the US over the past year. Now this honestly really did surprise me. I knew that this game was successful, hence why it warranted an immediate sequel, but I didn't realize just how successful that this game actually was. EA obviously hold the exclusivity rights to make Star Wars games. And EA appear on this top 10 list three times, but the Star Wars game is the one that comes out on top. So two of EA's biggest cash cows with Madden is second to Star Wars games. Now the reason I feel like this is actually properly newsworthy is for a few reasons. If Fallen Order was this successful then I honestly do not see the license for Star Wars games going to anyone but EA once their license ends in 2023. Hell, a Star Wars game was EA's best selling game in the past year in the US for physical media. Why would Lucasfilm want to give the rights to anyone else? They simply just wouldn't, plain and simple. Fallen Order beat out games like Animal Crossing, The Last of Us Part 2, Madden like I said before. Like how can you take anything away from EA if you're in Lucasfilm's position if you see that? And I think that's probably the kind of stuff that Lucasfilm would look at when they make their decision. So. I mean, I thought EA would get a license extension for Star Wars games anyway, but this has kind of just cemented that for me, and I hope that they do keep it. Or more specifically, at least keep a part of it so that Respawn and DICE can keep working on Battlefront games and Fallen Order sequels. They've got a winning formula there, and I love those games, and honestly, nothing would make me happier than seeing the developers at DICE get hands-on with Battlefront again. And obviously at the same time, I would love to see a full blown open world Star Wars game made by someone like Rockstar. So, you know, if EA kept the rights, but other publishers could get in on Star Wars as well, I think that would be great for everyone involved. 
But this does beg the question of why aren't they just going ham with Star Wars games? Not ending the live service of the big successful multiplayer one and thinking that a smaller niche project like Squadrons could fill the void. I don't know, just given this information, there must be a ton of stuff in the pipeline from EA for Star Wars, like some big stuff. EA have two years left on their license and I do not think that the Fallen Order sequel is going to be the only game that we see in that time frame. There just has to be more. If there wasn't more, I honestly don't think they would have cancelled Battlefront 2. It would just make zero sense in every possible aspect. But let me know what you think of all of that in the comments below. I'm just trying to use the facts to develop some sort of an outcome here, so it's all up for speculation at the end of the day, really. Now, it is also worth mentioning, given I have covered this in recent news videos, that Jedi Fallen Order did not receive any update for its one-year anniversary, nor did we get any official announcement of a Fallen Order sequel. The leaker was a reputable source who is right 99% of the time, but this time, I guess it just didn't come through, which sucks for us. Having said that though, if you read through what he said, you could kind of justify that an announcement or something could be dropped around the time frame of the anniversary, which was November 15th. We're well over a week past that now, so I think the chances of that at the moment are slim to none, but I thought I'd update you guys on that one anyway. But moving on and let's dive into the news for Star Wars Squadrons. Now, this came out of absolutely nowhere, but Squadrons will be getting two content drops, and it's not a little cosmetic here or there like the Mandalorian stuff. It's actually pretty big stuff that will, without a doubt, help breathe more life back to the game. As we know, Squadrons has kind of burnt out pretty quick, except for the people who are really into flying games. So I think Squadrons really does need this. Now, there will be two content drops, one in November and one in December. So the first update will be coming on the 25th of November, very close to when this video is posted. This update will include some bug fixes, balancing, a new map, Fostar Haven, which will be coming to multiplayer as a playable map for fleet battles and dogfights. Now, this map is pulled straight from the single player campaign, but for some reason was just never in the multiplayer modes until now. I'll be sure to throw some gameplay of the Fostar Haven map in the background so you guys know exactly which one that it is. Now, there is also going to be some new components coming in this update as well, which will include a boost extension kit, ion rockets, prototype piercing torpedoes, and anti-material rocket turrets. Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics of each one, as most of you probably won't really care, but for those who do, I will link everything below. Now, as for the second content drop, this will be coming in December. This update will include two new Starfighters, which will be the B-Wing and the TIE Defender. This is actually pretty cool to see, as most people were wondering where the hell the B-Wing was when this game came out. Well, it is coming, it's confirmed. And in my opinion, I think the game really does need these two Starfighters. I haven't played the hell out of Squadrons myself, as it's just not my kind of game, but even I was getting bored with the ships on offer with my limited playtime. So the B-Wing and the TIE Defender will definitely spice it up a bit, and I can't wait to actually jump on and test both of them out. And finally, there will be custom matches added to the game. Now, I think this is mainly due to the Squadron's tournaments that have been taking place, most notably the Content Creator Clash that I actually took part in, which had some really huge YouTubers and streamers as well. News update for you guys, I got knocked out in the first round because I suck. So yeah, I don't really know how I'm going to fare in future tournaments, probably not very well, but this is going to be good as a lot of people want to see this game have more esports kind of tournaments for the game, so that's going to help with that. But overall, that's pretty much it for Squadrons. I know most of you don't really care about Squadrons too much, as it's just not your thing. So I do tend to skim over Squadrons news in these videos. But today's news was just too big to keep it short and sweet. But that is pretty much going to do it for this video. I know that a lot of the stuff was a little bit speculative, and the news was probably a little bit more of a minimum than normal. But, you know, it's just the way that things have unfolded over the past couple weeks. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you could drop a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on if you haven't already for all things Star Wars gaming. 
And remember to check out those previous videos that I put a lot of time into for Fallen Order, Battlefront, and Battlefront 2. Links to all three of those videos will be below. But that's going to pretty much do it for this video, so thank you all for dropping by, and have a good one.